I've ended up harvesting the large bulk of my potato crop, both in the buckets and in the garden. And now, time to give some thought to uh, storing these potatoes. I wanna save a number of the potatoes to plant next year, along with having them to eat throughout the rest of this year. So last year I ended up creating a root cellar, not the typical root cellar, not very big, but it's actually worked out well. I built what is called the trash can root cellar. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how I did it. I've seen lots of videos about using a metal garbage can buried in the ground, and I'm gonna give it a try. So I've decided to put it inside my greenhouse. The only thing that I'm not looking forward to is actually digging the hole because it's gotta be done by hand since I'm inside this room here and I can't bring in any kind of uh, power equipment to uh, dig it out. And those overhanging trees also mean there's probably a ton of roots down in there. So it's gonna be a challenge. So it's gonna be a multi-day project just digging the hole to get this in the ground. My thinking about putting it in here, as opposed to say outside the uh, greenhouse, is that it's protected in here. I'm not sure if that's actually good or bad. I mean, the ground does freeze in here. It does get cold in here. This isn't any way protected. It's just sheltered more than uh, frost protected. So I think because I've seen people putting like uh, tarps and then insulation and then hay and whatever on top of their cans that they've uh, buried in the ground as a form of insulation and protection for the crops inside, I'm just thinking that maybe this uh, cover will add to that. That's my challenge, is turning this garbage can into a root cellar and burying it about three feet in the ground so that this cover is just below the ground level. But otherwise, that's the uh, game plan and we're gonna see how it goes. So I've started a couple of inches down. Got my first five gallon bucket of uh, dirt filled from there. Already running into rock. Yeah, I'm sure you can't hear it now. There we go. <laughs> so I'll end up having to dig that out. If that's about two inches, gives me one of these. I gotta go down about 36 inches or so. Only about 18 more of those to go. I've got a post hole digger so that when I'm down lower, probably have to end up resorting to that. So this ground is like super packed. I mean, it's like, very hard. I've, but I have gotten two buckets worth out so far, so it's, uh, it's coming along. However, I'm going to try and pour some water in here. Just let it drain down through, maybe do it again. And hopefully that will allow it a little bit more ease to dig through it. A few inches later. Well, Progress is going faster than I anticipated. There's really been no rocks, just those two right there. The water, <laughs> I, I kind of helped, except news alert, <laughs> mud is heavier than dirt, dry dirt. <laughs> so those buckets got really heavy. Looks like we're getting down to a sandy kind of uh, soil, maybe clay if it was wet. So maybe I don't want to wet it anymore, uh, but it's actually not too bad. Got one root right there. I haven't run into any roots along here yet. That's the first one. So my fears were unfounded. I think I'm about halfway through, so it's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Well, this is surprising for me, it works to my benefit. I measured the can height and figure with the convex shape, it's about 27 inches tall. And my deepest part of my hole looks like it's about 24 inches. So I really don't have that much further to go. That, that doesn't seem possible. And yet, that's what it is. So that's great. Only a few more inches. I should actually be done sooner than I thought. All right, we're about an hour in. Almost there. Still a couple more inches. Had to make the sides uh, smooth to fit the uh, can. So I didn't get deep enough yet. But we're almost there. And I think that's good. Although it's a little high on this side, to the back, it's almost level. So there's a slope to the ground. So I'll just backfill anyway, but then just make it level all the way around the, uh, the can. 
So about an hour or so of digging and uh, I got my hole. Now to backfill. And there we go. It's uh, in there. And looks like it should work, right? Yeah, so we got the, it's buried up to the lid. There's just enough room for the lid to fit over the top of it. And it's sealed. So this will be the insulation that I use for the uh, vegetables when I put them in. Seeding straw, I got a bale of it. It's easily 20 degrees cooler or more below ground. Many months later. So it's early November, probably a month later than I uh, wanted to actually uh, do this uh, portion of the video. But I'm gonna be storing the potatoes. I have, I bought store-bought potatoes. I wanna see if this uh, method works. I got a bag of uh, russet potatoes and going to put it in the uh, garbage can. I've had a thermometer uh, sitting down there and I've been monitoring the uh, temperature in here and the humidity. And at night, it's been running around 50, 60 degrees and that's without any um, insulation or anything like that in the can. And it's actually been kind of warm. It's been really warm October and even the beginning of November. Today is the 6th. Yesterday, the 5th, it was 80 degrees outside. So unseasonably warm. So I'm gonna, got a container down there. Now the straw should protect against the, any moisture from touching the potatoes. Putting a couple of inches down and then I'm going to layer the potatoes on top. I could probably just dump them in there. I've seen it said both ways that, or shown both ways, you just put all your potatoes in, doesn't matter if they're touching, and other times people say don't let the potatoes touch. So since I don't have a lot of potatoes, I'm going to uh, minimize their touching anyway. So I got about 16 potatoes sitting uh, down there. And now I'm gonna cover them up with another layer of straw. And with my potato harvest, carrot harvest, other root crops, I can uh, add to it. I've got a, a whole bunch of turnips growing and a whole bunch of beets, and I may end up putting them in here as well uh, when they're finally ready to be picked, and just to see how well they do in here. Whoops. <laughs> okay. That was some sage. Maybe I'll put the uh, thermometer back in just to see how it goes. So we've got it covered up now. So this is the garbage can root cellar. I'm gonna see how this works. Figured I'd give it a go this winter with some store-bought. And then next year, as I increase my potato uh, production, I'll uh, know whether or not I'll be able to use this the following uh, winter to see if this uh, uh, method works. Uh, we'll be coming out here during the winter time and removing a couple of potatoes and seeing how well they held up. Later. It's January 7th. Oh, wait. Looks like my uh, temperature thermometer. Yeah. Batteries died. Okay, we haven't checked on this in a while. But it does look like some things have grown. You can start to see them <laughs> pop it up through the straw, which isn't good, but perhaps not too surprising considering really how warm it's been. I and mean, we had the, like two weeks of uh, <laughs> subarctic uh, temperatures, but uh, in general, it's been uh, kind of warmish. So let's see what it is that's growing. It is too early to, you know, be taking anything out of here. I can tell you the straw feels actually a little moist or damp, I should say. Uh, maybe not a terrible thing. 
And you see my potatoes have uh, <laughs> sprouted. And this is a, oh, a turnip. Okay. Maybe it's not so bad then. I mean, I don't want my turnips growing on me. But if it's got to be something that's growing, I'd rather it be a turnip than uh, my potatoes. Um, they're actually still very firm. So that's good. That's good to know. Uh, I'm guessing this is my rutabaga. All right. So that has sprouted again. Also very firm. I'm going to put that over there. But I should dig down and check on how the uh, vegetables are doing further down. Like the potatoes. I'm trying to remember what else I put in here. <laughs> this is a beet. Very hard. That's great. Really interested in the potatoes, though. And there we are. Okay, first potato, very firm, very firm, and no growth. So that's something to be hopeful for. I'm actually going to leave that covered though. Yeah. They all feel uh, good. None of them have sprouted. None of them look like they've rotted. As I said, I don't wanna bring them up because it is a little early, but I'm happy. I think this uh, garbage can uh, root cellar actually works. Awesome. So I'm gonna put these vegetables back in and I'll put the root vegetables back in. I want to see how they perform through the rest of the winter. It is only January, and here in Zone 7A in northeastern New Jersey, we've, we've got the rest of this month to go and all of February, and that's when we usually get our really cold weather and our snows and freezing temps. So I wanna see how they perform through that. All right, we'll check in in a few more months when spring's about to break. These are rutabagas. This is a turnip, rutabaga, rutabaga, turnips, and a couple of beets that I forgot to take out previously. But all of these vegetables, they're actually quite hard still. This is now the beginning of March. So what is that? Five months they've uh, been in storage. They've held up quite well. Now, if I want to, I could take one of these turnips, say, or one of the rutabagas, plant it in the ground. And while I wouldn't get another rutabaga or another turnip, or even another beet, what I would do is I'd be able to collect seed from these because in their second year, they would go to seed. It's a good way to uh, keep your uh, your vegetables for a long period of time, even if you don't uh, have a traditional root cellar. <laughs> for whatever reason, I didn't film the potatoes in the trash can. But when I chitted my potatoes earlier this year, I gave a quick rundown on them and you can see how the potatoes held up now these have been around since last September. I put them into my homemade root cellar, and I'll show that in a future video. But the purpose was to see if they would actually hold up over time, and they do, they're very hard. So it's almost mid-July. I'm not sure if I put potatoes uh, from the harvest into that trash can now, if they're gonna last all the way until next March, 
when I want to start chitting potatoes again. That's a long time for them to be in there. Though, the russet potatoes that I did save over that time, what was it, like five months or something like that, they were in there. They held up quite well. And they didn't sprout or anything like that. But they were put in when it was slightly cooler temperatures. Though we did have some pretty warm uh, periods, as I noted. But I'm going to take a few of the potatoes and put them in there. And we'll see how they're going to hold up over time. I'm going to get a bunch more uh, potatoes from the supermarket and try and uh, chit them right now, grow them into the fall, and then use those potatoes to uh, grow next year. The problem with that, of course, is that I'm trying not to rely upon the supermarket for my supply or from seed potato companies. I'd like to have my own crop that I'm constantly uh, reusing and that are acclimating themselves to my uh, particular climate right here. I'm not sure how soon you can turn over potatoes, like the potatoes I've just harvested now. Do they need some kind of cold spell? Do I put them in the refrigerator for a couple of months? But then again, they're not going to uh, uh, be ready then to harvest now, which is really in July is when I would wanna be planting my fall crop of potatoes. So if anybody has any knowledge about how long a dormancy period, I guess uh, you would call it, potatoes need before you can replant them, let me know in the comments below. Can I just take a potato that I've just harvested, throw it back in the ground, and will it produce more potatoes? I don't know. <laughs> let me know in the comments below. But if you want to see what we were doing in the garden last week, check out this video right here, and then subscribe and hit that notification bell, and that way you'll be able to follow along in the progress on all of our vegetables. Okay, thanks for watching.